Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we're going to be talking about a really iconic card, so to speak, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, really. But, it's actually a very, a card that means a lot to me, and one of my early decks I used to play back in the day. And I forgot to mention it when I was talking about Strike Ninja, uh, or when I, you see my video about Strike Ninja. Um, I forgot to mention this deck, I couldn't believe it skipped my mind, but um, we're going to talk about it today, because it was such a fun deck to play back then. Uh, and that, the card for today's discussion on every card has a story, is none other than the Legendary Fisherman. THE Legendary Fisherman, Meku Tsunami. Now, I was freak, Mr. Freaky Fish Guy himself, I was, nah, I wasn't a fan of Mako, though I loved his accent, it sounded funny. But, Legendary Fisherman, I was... I really liked. Um, the artwork of this card as the uh, ulti is really nice. And this is the original ones from Feral uh, PSV. Uh, so I believe that's PSV is, I think that's Pharaonic Servant. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. But I know it's one of the original sets of Yu-Gi-Oh because this came out really early. Um, but this card just looks gorgeous. Just take a minute to admire a hollow version of this. Now, this is a really cool story about this card. I actually pulled this card out of a pack, um, which is really interesting. And it led me to want to play this card, because back in the day, yeah, I loved, and it's still true to this day, really, with me. I love playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, all right, in, in formats. Some formats, you know, nah, this format too crazy, I'm not playing it that much. But at my heart, still, I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh for fun sometimes, you know. If you're not enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh, either playing competitively or for fun, then why are you playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, why are you here? Like, if you're not enjoying it, why are you playing it? You have to enjoy it at either the competitive level or the fun level, or somewhere in between. You, you have to, to play this game. Because, you know, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. We grew up with it. We, we, it's part of us. If you're watching this video, you probably enjoy the game to some extent, or it's been a part of you for some time, or at some point of your past. And Legendary Fisherman kind of embodies that. Um, you know, I've always liked the card, the artwork. And when I pulled it out of the pack, I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's Legendary Fisherman. Dang, that looks cool. And I got one of my silver sleeves, which I used to get a lot, and I sleeved them up. So I'll just take him out of the sleeve for right now and just show you. But he's pretty much in near mint condition since the day I got him. But the artwork and my liking for this card, and from watching the duel between, what was it, Joey and Mako, led me to build a deck uh, called Legendary Ocean Deck. Or some of you guys may know it by another name called Water Beatdown. Now, what was Water Beatdown, you may ask? Water Beatdown used a Legendary Ocean uh, and other water monsters to beat down your opponent with big monsters. So you brought out big monsters and beat your opponent down. If anybody wants to go back in my archives to like a year or so ago, I did a deck on Crab Turtle. And I talked about the beatdown strategy. And pretty much what the beatdown strategy was, Legendary Ocean allowed you to take monsters that you had on your side of the field and in your hand and reduce their level by one if they were water monsters. So Legendary Fisherman uh, requires one tribute, but with Legendary Ocean on the field, he's a four star. So he's a normal summonable 1850 beat stick. Now that, to me, sounds decent, sounds good now. He's a normal summonable monster. And because of that, now I can use his effect more effectively, which is, if you don't know, remember his effect, when Umi is face up on the field, this card is unaffected by any magic cards, which was amazing, and can't be attacked by opponent's monster. That was pretty good back in the day. And I'm not lying, if you guys do not know Legendary Ocean, that card, along 
I would say it was a top five field spell for back then because there wasn't really a lot of good field spells besides Necro Valley and Harpy's Hunting Ground, but nobody played Harpy's really. Um, so it was really good. And it was a competitive, valuable deck that I won with at locals a couple times, um, which was amazing. So what you would do, like, you would use things like Gaga Gaga Gigo. Uh, you would use things like, um, what not, uh, Gigi Gagago. Uh, I think it's named the one that's a 2,450 attacker that's level 5. Uh, you would use 7 colored fish. You would use any good water monsters that you could get. Uh, there was, what was it, Red Salmon, I think was a 24 beta with like only 0 defense or like 200 defense. I used that. Uh, you used the Legendary Fisherman. Because uh, he was the most broken one in the deck. He couldn't be targeted by spells. He couldn't be, you know, spells were unaffected by him. So if your opponent had a dark hole at the time, or they try to book a moon him, nope, you can't do that. So he was really powerful that aspect, and they couldn't get rid of him. So that was another good aspect of him. So he was really hard to get around. He was a problem, really, so to speak. And, you know, with Legendary Ocean, I believe they got, what, 200 attack or 300 attack. So he was around a 2,000 beater, which was really, really good. And if you guys don't know, Legendary Ocean is treated as Umi. So this worked. You could, you know, use his effect because Umi was on the field, a.k.a. Legendary Ocean. And it was just a, such a fun deck to play. Uh, it was a really good deck. You had um, the spiritual alloy trap that allowed you to rip a card out, you know, tribute a card. So if they did get rid of one of your monsters, you could rip a card out of their hand. You had Tornado Wall, which was really good. You had, there was just so many good, like, early water cards back then. Uh, Salvage was a good card, I think, but I didn't really use Salvage that much because everything was, like, a beatdown. That's why it was called Water Beatdown uh, or Legendary Ocean deck because you were beating down your opponent with big, normal summonable monsters. So just imagine a beatdown deck that is using, all right, water monsters with big attack that are 2,000 more attack. And then you could use other different good cards with that. Uh, pot, you know, your pot of greed, your dark holes, your trap holes, whatever the case may be, and you, have, and you run that. And I ran that deck all the way up until 5Ds, I think, or the GX late GX era, I ran that deck. And it was a fun deck, I tell you what. Uh, it was a really fun deck, and it was really good. It was pretty damn decent, I have to admit, to this day. It was really decent and really something. Um, really good, I would have to say. And it was really fun to play. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I miss playing that deck. And that's why I built that Crab Turtle deck, is because I was like, you know what? I want to revisit that old deck, that old water beatdown type of deck. And uh, I sometimes tech this guy in, you know. Um, I'm hoping to one day, uh, if not by the time you see this video, uh, build a, a legendary fisherman deck around, you know, water beatdown strategies again. But we'll have to see uh, where that goes, actually. But it'd be really fun to play because I've always loved water. Um, I loved mermails. I loved water beatdown. I just loved legendary ocean deck. It was. I've always loved the water theme because it's always had good cards. Just like uh, zombie players love the zombie archetypes, you know, because the zombies have a lot of good generic support. Same thing with water. It has a lot of good generic support. Yes, it may not be all used in Mermail necessarily, but there's a lot of good support out there if you just take a minute to look around and look at it, really. Um, there's a lot of it. Everything from tree toads to Bahamid sharks to just other good exceed monsters. It has a lot of good things going for it. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun talking about Legendary Fisherman. I mean, it was Joey's card. I mean, he, he used it and Mako used it. And the artwork just looks so cool. Uh, I know in the OCG, that's supposed to be a sphere, but it's kind of like, I don't know what the heck they did to it. It's like something, a, a drumstick to beat the drums. I don't know. But the shark looks really cool. If you can see the teeth, they shine and everything, which looks really cool. So yeah. It looks really cool. I love this card. It looks so awesome. And I'm so happy that I've kept it in such good condition all these years. But yeah, guys. Till next time, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And I'll see you guys next time.
Take care, everybody, and good luck dueling to all of you. I'll see you guys next time, and go Joey Wheeler. Go Legendary Fisherman and his awesome artwork. And now, you know, nowadays we actually got the other Legendary Fisherman. We got Legendary Fisherman 2 and Legendary Fisherman 3. So he's upgraded himself now since the olden days. But yeah, until next time, guys, take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Good luck dueling to all of you.